Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer here after Vanderbilt's 88-80 to win over Florida in Gainesville. It's Jerry Stackhouse's first win over Florida of his tenure. It's a week of first for Jerry Stackhouse and his group. Vanderbilt beat Tennessee on Wednesday for the first win of his tenure. Broken 11-game losing streak to the Volunteers. And then today, goes to Gainesville, gets his first win over Florida uh, of his tenure. Vanderbilt steps a nine-game losing streak to Florida today and wins in Gainesville for the first time since 2017. So, the, it's just a tremendous week for Vanderbilt. Can't ask for much better. Get two wins that are well within quad one to boost their resume. Get to 500 in the league, which we weren't sure that was going to happen at all at any point after South Carolina. It just feels like Vanderbilt has really exceeded expectations and kind of found itself throughout the last few weeks. And today, you can't start the conversation without Liam Robbins, who had a career day, had 32 points, 10 for 18 from the field, 10 rebounds, four blocks. And this was against Colin Castleton, who – in my mind, is the toughest matchup Liam Robbins has faced this season, and probably the toughest matchup he will face. Castleton at 25 and was really good also, but Robbins was better. And uh, if you told me Colin Castleton at 25 and had all those rebounds as well, I would think he was probably the better guy, but Robbins was just unbelievable today. Got to the line 11 times, got Castleton in foul trouble at one point, although Castleton got in less foul trouble than Robbins. Uh, Robbins was just tremendous in every aspect of the word when Vanderbilt Kind of was struggling with that pace a little bit early on, although they didn't struggle all that much. Robbins was the guy they turned to. He had eight of Vanderbilt's first 11 points. A few minutes later, posterized Castleton and was just unbelievable throughout the day. 32 points is Robbins' career high. Did it pretty efficiently, too. 10 for 18 from the field. Shot 75% from three. And this is the second game in a row Robbins has hit three threes. Um, that's probably the number one thing that Robbins had to improve on in order to maybe get a look at the next level when the season has ended. And Man, has he done it. Uh, that's a real testament to Liam Robbins and his work ethic. And the three-point shot was always in there, uh, but it really hadn't shown up all that much. He hit one at Arkansas, hit three against Tennessee, hit three today. And now that looks to be a staple of his game that maybe we expected early on but didn't quite see. Now we see it. And uh, Liam Robbins has just been unbelievable uh, down the stretch here and was probably had his best game of the season and the best game of his college career today in a game that Vanderbilt needed him to have it. And uh, – can't say more about Liam Robbins, but probably will. Just a unbelievable outing from Liam Robbins and uh, prove that he is the best player on this Vanderbilt team. Tyron Lawrence has a case, but had four today. When Lawrence didn't step up, Robbins did. And uh, worked the ball screens with Castleton when he was playing drop coverage. He was able to step out and make him guard on the perimeter a little bit, stretch the floor. Just did so much for Vanderbilt and uh, got all those blocks as well. So contributed on both ends, unsurprisingly, but... Trey Thomas also, I think, needs to be given a lot of credit for what he did today. Five for five from the field, four for four from three, 16 points. And uh, when Vanderbilt needed kind of a boost, Trey Thomas hit some big shots, took the lead late in the first half uh, on that beautiful possession where Vanderbilt faced a little bit of zone, a little bit of ball pressure. Uh, Quentin Laura Brown found Trey Thomas in the corner for that wide open three. Thomas hit one from the logo. Just an incredible outing from a guy who's got a lot of Flack from Vanderbilt fans over the years uh, proved today that he can be a contributor for this team and was tremendous. Don't think he's going to get a whole lot of the shine, but uh, Trey Thomas was also really, really solid. And Trey Thomas is kind of a microcosm of what went right for Vanderbilt today. Uh, the ball moved. The offense was really good. Um, this is the turnover ratio throughout the last few games has been really solid, 36 to 20. Uh, that's not a ratio, but uh, I didn't want to do that math. It's 1.8, but – Vanderbilt has really taken care of the ball. The ball has moved. The offense has flowed throughout the last three games. And that's probably the biggest positive outside of them ending those streaks, ending all the things that uh, you think about in terms of job security and all that. It feels like outside of kind of the bigger stories, the best thing Vanderbilt's done on the floor is it's offense. Um, they found guys. Everybody has stepped up. Colin Smith even hit big shots today. No, Shelby hit a shot. That really continued the momentum for Vanderbilt. Jordan Wright had a few big baskets, although he was only three for 10. Ezra Mignon uh, got into the lane a few times, made some plays. And uh, even Tyron Lawrence, who didn't have a great day, felt like he was able to work the ball screens a little bit with Castleton and drop coverage and make some plays. So just felt like everybody really chipped in offensively today and everybody had an impact. Vanderbilt got to the line 29 times today, um, made 12 threes, shot nearly 50% from the field. And uh, not much more to say about the offense. It was just – there's not much to take away from it, at least. Uh, there's just so much that went right for this offense and so much that has gone right for this offense throughout the week. They haven't turned it over like they did early on in the season. They're sharing the wealth. Vanderbilt's go-to guys are stepping up, as Liam Robbins did today. 
Jordan Wright hit a few big shots. Tyron Lawrence, although didn't have a great day, uh, you can still kind of see the flashes, and I think he's excused after the two games he had at Ole Miss and against Tennessee. Well, I guess I don't know why I keep saying at Ole Miss. It was against Ole Miss. Against Ole Miss and against Tennessee, Tyron Lawrence was tremendous. He deserved to have a day where he could get some grace, and uh, Liam Robbins and Trey Thomas provided that for him. So just a tremendous, tremendous outing for Vanderbilt. I think if you want to look at a negative, it would be the points in the paint that Florida had. A lot of Florida's offense came within the paint throughout the day. And uh, am I super concerned about that after a game like this? No, but just kind of want to go in full transparency here. Uh, Vanderbilt only forced three turnovers. Florida shot 10% from three and was still in this game. So kind of tells you a little bit about the way Vanderbilt hasn't really been able to put pressure on opposing teams. Florida got to the line 23 times, um, had 58 points in the paint. Just feels like Vanderbilt has a little bit left to be desired defensively, but in a game with this kind of speed, uh, no stoppages throughout the first 10 minutes, um, no fouls committed throughout the first 10 minutes, no turnovers really. Um, you kind of take a win in that kind of game against a team with a ton of really good players, probably a first-team All-SEC, second-team All-SEC guy in Colin Castleton, who played well, Riley Kugel, uh, one of the bright young guards in the league. And it just feels like Vanderbilt was fortunate to find a way to win this game and all the credit to them in the world. It felt like the offense, they've really found themselves offensively and they found themselves as a group. Uh, just a tremendous week for Vanderbilt. And uh, if they can continue this momentum, at South Carolina, that's a four-game winning streak throughout the SEC. Not something we anticipated them to do earlier on in the year. I think actually one of my quick takes after South Carolina the first time was that they wouldn't get another three-game winning streak. Boy, have they proven me wrong, and I think they proved a lot of people wrong throughout the last few days. Uh, Jerry Stackhouse didn't have a win over Tennessee or Florida um, heading into this week. Had a 17. Would, it, would that be 17? No, <laughs> not even close. Um, a 19-game losing streak, 20-game losing streak. Oh, my gosh. 20-game losing streak combined to Florida and Tennessee heading into the week and one quad, one win. Vanderbilt gets both of those snapped in a week and is up to three quad, one wins in a week. So it's a lot different of a conversation than we were having a week ago in Vanderbilt. Had that 57-point loss as Jerry Sackhouse lost the locker room. Can this team avoid it being a disaster? They have certainly avoided it being a disaster. Vanderbilt has really found itself and uh, is playing the best basketball it has all season in mid-February. I think if you told Jerry Stackhouse that, he would be real happy two months ago if you told him that. Just a tremendous turn for Vanderbilt. And uh, we've gone from talking about all that to talking about them being maybe an NIT team, maybe them being a team that gets really hot in the SEC tournament, probably doesn't make the tournament, but certainly – isn't completely out of it yet. And uh, I think that's a big step for this Vanderbilt program as compared to where it was two months ago. So not much more to say about this one. This was about as well as Vanderbilt's played all year. And uh, I thought that Tennessee was one of their better games this year. Today kind of fit that bill as well. Just a tremendous game for Vanderbilt uh, in all aspects, except for maybe some interior defensive issues. Vanderbilt only turned it over five times. I was the old man throughout the whole non-conference slate talking about Vanderbilt needs to take care of the ball. They need to take care of possessions, value these possessions. Boy, have they done that. And uh, 36 to 20 assist to turnover is tremendous. So a lot to like from this Vanderbilt team as they head into South Carolina on Tuesday in a game that's certainly winnable again. And uh, a lot to like, as I said, a lot to build on as well for this Vanderbilt team who offensively is playing the best it has all year. If the defense can come around a little bit, uh, this can certainly be a scary team. And there are flashes of solid defense with this team. Larry Robbins is the shot blocker. There's guys with tremendous energy all throughout the roster. And uh, it's a team that is capable defensively right now. Maybe isn't getting the stops or the turnovers, especially the turnovers. I think that's probably their biggest issue on that end is just forcing turnovers. But they rebounded today. Um, they forced Florida into a 10% shooting performance from three on 23s, which is their average of how many they're going to take a game. So it wasn't a completely uncharacteristic performance um, in terms of how kind of – how do I want to say this? Vanderbilt didn't stop Florida from shooting threes, but did a good enough job out there to limit what they could do and kind of make them one-dimensional, which is what I talked about going into this game. 
Uh, a few of their guards had good days. Kugel had 18. Lofton had uh, 12. Richard had seven, but it felt like Florida was really going to win and lose with Colin Castleton. And you like that if you're Florida, but also you don't like the the kind of one-dimensional nature of that, that you're going to have to play through the post. You're going to have to play through Castleton. If he gets in foul trouble, this game's probably over. You're going to have to play through the paint. And uh, Vanderbilt did a nice job kind of limiting what Florida could do from beyond the arc and finding a way to spoil their season. Florida was in the first four out or the next four out um, this morning. Now they have a real uphill climb to make the tournament after a quad three loss to Vanderbilt today. Vanderbilt leads with a quad one win and uh, plenty to build on as they head into one of their easier stretches throughout the year. Auburn's a tough game, but they're going to see South Carolina, LSU, real chance at NIT birth here and uh, maybe a smaller chance at uh, a little bit more. So thank you guys for watching. God bless. And uh, be back on Tuesday to cover South Carolina. Hopefully I won't screw up the tweet that day. If you know, you know, uh, I probably <laughs> – Maybe I should say it sounds a little eerie, but I said they had a losing streak somehow in the tweet, but they do not three game winning streak for Vanderbilt up to six and six in the league and uh, probably in the best position they've been in all year playing the best basketball they've played all year at the time of the year they need to play it. So a lot to like it from this Vanderbilt team and uh, we'll be here to cover the rest of the way. Thank you guys for watching. God bless. Peace.